today we are going to start a new lecture that is called beam deflection so what is deflection suppose you have a beam like this maybe it's a simply supported beam you are having okay so if we apply some sort of load on it okay so due to this load it will deflect so maybe this is the neutral axis of this beam okay so after the deflection you find this is another neutral axis okay so this is the new locations after applying the load so this amount of change of the shape not shape change of the neutral axis locations that is we call deflection del so this curve we call elastic curve what curve elastic curve so this is the phenomena happens for any kinds of load whenever you are having beam kind member <clears throat> either it is a point load irregular or arbitrary load any kinds of load the beam will show some deflection so if it is up to the elastic limit so that time you will find no permanent damage on this beam but whenever it exits the elastic limit due to this deflection you will find some permanent deflection and you will uh, able to see some uh, cracks permanent cracks as well okay so in, the, in this chapter <coughs> this chapter we will be considering the rigidity of beam we will consider so of course we will consider the rigid beam so rigid beam so why do you need this beam deflection because most of the cases okay we consider the strength that is the sigma right or moment you understand so this is the force taking capacity we consider and we also need to consider the deflection value just for an example if i say suppose you design a beam which is sufficiently taking the amount of load that you apply but what happened if it shows you excessive deflection you understand if it shows you excessive deflection so that time you will not accept so in case of design of beam you must confirm the load capacity and the deflection you understand okay so that's why design of beam especially for steel members based on strength considerations and deflection evaluation so you need to consider the strength consideration that is enough strength to take the load and deflection it should be in a acceptable range of deflections it's not like that any kinds of deflection just before failing you will accept so the deformation of beam is usually expressed in terms of its deflection from its original unloaded positions so here you can see before applying the load the beam was in this position right the neutral axis of this beam is like that after you apply the load you find the new neutral axis okay so that's why they are saying the deformation of beam is usually expressed in terms of its deflection from its original unloaded positions so its original unloaded position is this and deflected one is this so this distance is your deflection the deflection is measured from the original neutral axis or original neutral surface of the beam to the neutral surface of the deformed beam so this is the a neutral axis or neutral surface of the unloaded condition and after loading you get new neutral axis that difference or this uh, deformations amount is your deflection the configuration assumed by the deformed neutral surface is known as the elastic curve of the beam so have a look after deformations you find a new neutral surface or neutral axis so that is we call the elastic curve okay suppose that is actually the beam you know just like that after deformation the beam is look like that 
okay so the neutral axis is new neutral axis you find so the difference between this unloaded neutral axis and the deformed neutral axis that portion will consider the deflection so in in this given figure you can see that this is the unloaded neutral axis and this is after loading you find the new neutral axis so this deflection we call or this amount of displacement we call the deflection okay any doubt up to this and this deflected new neutral axis or new surface neutral surface we call the elastic curve after this is clear yes sir so there are a couple of methods to calculate this deflection so basically uh, double integration methods which is very popular area moment method these one as well and conjugate beam method superposition method virtual work method so these three methods will this will be discussed uh, in upper classes like structure one probably but in this solid mechanics course i will try to cover these two methods double integration methods area moment method so both are based on the integration process and i hope you are uh, very much well known with this integration process by the name of double integration we can see there will be some pr process with respect to twice integrations and area moment so it's similar like the area of the moment diagram something like this it sounds like that right so actually these techniques are based on this name as well okay so <clears throat> let me discuss the double integration method so in case of double integration method you need to understand some basic discussions like you already know what is elastic curve right if we can find out the elastic curve locations from the previous neutral axis okay so that is our main target or that time we can say how much deflection is in a particular locations suppose here you can see this is a beam which is having simply supported with some hanging portion if we apply p1 load here you will find this is a elastic curve right that is the amount of deflection so after a certain distance of x if you want to calculate the deflection that is the amount of deflection right so what is our main intention our main in intention is to calculate this deflection y so after a certain distance of x so this x can be your own choice you you're the uh, designer so you can say okay I want to take the deflection of these particular points this particular point so that particular point you want to calculate the deflection so if you can calculate this y value that is your success so that is your main target to calculate deflection okay so to calculate this we need some techniques like we know if if you consider a very small segment as a tangent a small portion as a tangent so that time we can say theta equals to or tan theta equals to dy by dx so if tends tends to be zero so that time we can say theta so theta equals to dy by dx that is the slope do you understand or not so if we can write this one if we just do one time differentiation of this one so what will happen with respect to x axis so it would be d theta by dx equals to d square y by dx whole square do you understand you just do another differentiations with respect to dx okay yes, sir. so here we can see one interesting thing that in the flexible stress calculations we develop one equation that is 1 by rho which is the curvatures right equals to m by ei do you remember that equation yes sir okay in flexible stress development we have proved that so 
that 1 by rho, rho is what? The radius of the curvature, right? Equivalence to radius. m over ei. What is ei value? Modulus of specific and moment of inertia. Okay, in together, we call it flexural rigidity. So, ei is the flexural rigidity. Okay. In total, ei is the flexural rigidity. Okay. So, if up to this is clear, then we know this one is the curvature because this information so you can write 1 by rho. Okay. So, in that similar sense, we can write 1 by rho equals to d square y by dx square. So, if 1 by uh, uh, d, uh, rho equals to d square y by dx whole square, so we can also replace this 1 by rho equals to m y by, sorry, m by e i. So, which equivalence to d square y by dx whole square. Up to this is clear with respect to the curvature of equations. Because we can consider this is rho. So, we already developed in last chapters that is 1 by rho equals to m by e i. And which is equivalence to d theta by dx. Because 1 by rho equals to d theta by dx. So, this is the relationship with the curvature equations. So, up to now, we can say either 1 by rho equals to d square y by dx whole square or m by ei equals to g square y by dx whole square. If up to this is clear, then we can go to the next development. Here you can see that this is from the general calculus we find that 1 by rho equals to these equations. These are curvature equations and differential equations. Okay. So, here to prove this one, we can use this uh, elementary calculus equations where dy by dx is very small actually. dy by dx. Think like that. For a particular beam, will have this amount of y which is very small okay this amount of y is very small again if you do the differentiation of this small one with respect to x is getting another small quantity so if you make the square of this small quantity suppose 0 0.5 into 0.5 how much it is 0 0.25. 0 0.25. So, what does it 0 mean? 0.25. While you multiplying the small value with the small value, you are making another smaller value than that. Uh -huh. Do you understand? So, this way, if you do consider this way, it seems to be 0. This value seems to be 0 or nearly 0. So, 1 plus nearly 0, okay, or tends to 0, we consider which is tends to 1. Do you understand? So, that's why from the elementary uh, calculus also we can say 1 by rho equals to d square y by dx whole square. So, this is actually the proof just to get more satisfaction that okay 1 by rho equals to this value. Okay. So here we can see that we already got this value, right? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, no response. Are you are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If you're with me, you can understand this one. So can I write this equals to m by e i? Hmm? Yes. 
So if I can write these equals to m by i, so I can say m equals to e i d square y by x dx whole square. Can you write this equation? Yes, sir. Okay. So similarly, here you can see that I can say that mx or m equals to this. Up to this is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so you can see also if you do one time integration of this one if you do first time integration of this one so what will happen one differentiation will cancel and you will do one time integration of mx so in terms of ei dy by dx so one d by dx is cancelled because you you did one time integration right so in in terms of m so it would be integration of mx into dx plus c1 for the constant of one time integration up to this is clear how did we come from this line to this line i hope this is very simple basic nothing complex right so if you do one time integration you will get this one so now what is our main target What is our main target? To find out y. Our main target is to calculate y, right? Do you understand? Our main target is to calculate this y. So as we go, we know that if you do another integration, so another d by dx will cancel. So only y will be left over. So simply if you do another integration of these equations, you will get ei into y equals to double integration of this so instead of writing dx here you can also write dx here as well into dx right we can write this way i hope okay so that means what e i y double integration of m dx dx plus c1 x because this is the constant so plus c2 so finally, we come up to the equation of double integration method is this. Do you understand or not? So we can write like E i y equals to double integration of m dx dx plus c1 x plus c2 right after this is clear yes, yes. now what is the main challenge to calculate this equation c1 and c2 to calculate this equation main challenges are to solve for c1 and c2 that is two constant of c1 and c2 these two constant are the main challenge here because you can calculate the ei ea is the moment of uh, sorry flexible rigidity you can get the value from of e and i e from the young modulus of elasticity and i from the model, uh, moment of inertia you can easily get it i actually the physical properties you can uh, derive this one as well but main challenge is here c1 and c2 so with the help of boundary conditions we can solve this one so how many unknowns are here two unknowns but we have one equations yes sir so here you can see that two unknown one equation is difficult to develop so that's why if we apply the boundary condition of the supports and reaction we can get easily like as for an example here you can see if it is a pin support and roller support so deflection is zero their deflection is zero 
y at point a and y at point b will be zero do you understand or not because in this particular point no deflection will occur so that's how we can say y equals to zero and y at point b also zero this is for the simply supported situation right but here we might have some theta value theta is not equals to zero similarly if it is a pin support like that way as well so we can see y at point a is zero y at point b still zero if it is like having some hanging portions and having downward force but if it is a cantilever portion look it carefully y at point a is zero and theta at point a also zero but if i say y at point b is it zero no that means at point b at point b you might have some deflection right and at point b you might have some theta so that's why deflection and the rotation at point b are not zero up to this is clear so now you should ask me sir why do you need this boundary condition because we can see there are two unknowns or two constant c1 and c2 so we can technically consider some boundary conditions or some point locations that where we make c2 or c1 is zero or c1 can be find so once we can find out c1 or c2 somehow by using some equation so that means we can solve these main target equations easily and then we can calculate the y very easily do you understand Just for an example, if I consider point A, so it at point A, what is the distance of X? Hmm? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. So if X is zero, this term will be zero, right? Hello? Are you getting the concept? If X is zero, this term will be zero, right? And others values y will be zero because at point a y a is zero so this term will also be zero so only m equations are there and c2 are there so m and c2 are there so we can easily calculate the value of c2 right so this is the smart smart technique of using the boundary condition so once you get the value of c2 so that time you can consider the moment at, uh, sorry point deflection point at point b so that time x is your total distance this way you can put find the value of others so if you do one example that would be easier but till now is there any confusion with this boundary condition so if i just consider a very small example to understand it would be easy for you. Suppose think of this beam. You are having a beam A, B and C. At point B locations you are having two, 300, kilo, uh, 300 Newton of point load. And point A you are having a point reaction that might be, this might be the pin support. Right? And this might be the roller support. So both the locations you will have the point reactions. Right? So first of all, based on the given conditions and the supports, you have to find out the unknowns. So first of all, you will calculate the R1 and R2. So here, this is not the main challenge of finding R1 and R2. So that's why they have given it directly to you. Okay? So what they said to find 
A concentrated load 300 Newton is supported as shown in figure. Determine the equation of elastic curve. Equation of elastic curve between each change of loading point and the maximum deflection in the beam. So first of all, we need to calculate the elastic curve equations. Okay, so here I should explain it something here as well. Have a look. This is the equation of elastic curve. Because through this we can find out this location of Y. So that's why we call it elastic curve equation. Do you understand why do we call it elastic curve equation? And this is the equation of slope. Which is EI dy by dx. So we know dy by dx is the slope equation. Right? Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay. Please, this is the basic, uh, I think, calculus thing. You hope, I hope you understand. So, if you consider this example. So, first of all, we can see we need to develop M equations. In before, we used to find out the M by considering the diagram, right? Like drawing the shear force diagram and drawing the bending moment diagram. And this way, we can calculate the amount of moment. And which locations we can, we, if you want to calculate the moment, you can simply take the section and we can find it out. But here, main challenge is that we don't know where our deflection will be maximum. Do you know that which location our deflection will be maximum? We don't know. So that's why you also cannot say that exactly which location we need to find out the amount of moment. Are you getting the concept? Yes. Like before last chapter, uh, yes, like sir. In calculation of the moment, uh, not moment, flexural stress and the horizontal sharing stress, we could have predict that okay, where our moment will be maximum. So on that particular point, we try to calculate the moment or try to take the section and then we can calculate the moment. But in this situation, we don't know where our deflection will be maximum. So that's why we need a general equation. General equations like that. Suppose you have a uh, beam with the load is like this one so you have to develop a general equations where you will just simply put the value of x and you will get the value of moment so that is called moment general equations development so now you can see if I consider total distance is x do not consider this distance is x Suppose total distance is x just before this point. Just before this point. So we have taken a section here. And this is the left portion of the section. So we know this is the situation. This situation is plus condition, right? So since you have taken the left portion of the section, it would be this way and this way. Okay. So you are going to calculate this moment. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are going to calculate this moment. But your target is not to calculate the moment exactly. Your target is to develop an equation. So you consider this total distance is x. So now you try to develop the equations. So it will be easy for you. Suppose if you take moment at this particular point. So you can see this is rotating anti-clockwise, right? Suppose if you consider moment at point C. Just according to the equation as we really, usually do. And you consider clockwise is positive. Right? Then what is the equation? Who can tell me? Okay, first of all, this R1. R1 is how much? 100. So, 100 into the distance is how much? 4. Y4. Distance is X. X. Distance is X. Okay. And it is rotating clockwise with respect to point C. So, that is plus.
So why plus? Because it is rotating clockwise with respect to C. You are taking movement at point C. So what kind of rotation it is? It is clockwise rotation. So we consider clockwise rotation is plus. Sir, R1. Yes. Yes, sir. So 100 value is R1. Okay. So now here you can see 300. So this 300 value is rotating anti-clockwise with respect to C. Right? So minus. Yes, sir. Minus. Yes. 300 and distance is this much so what will the distance one one meter we don't know exactly this is one we consider total is x but we have taken the section just before one right just before c so that's why you cannot consider this is one exactly that should be x minus Two. You understand because you don't know the value of x. Sir, there is given a b equal to two m and b is equal to sir one. One. So, so in what what equal... we are doing, we are trying to develop a general equation that where you just put the value of x and you will get the moment of any location of the beam. So that's why we consider the total distance of yes. the beam is x. Do you understand? Yes. So that's why if you know this value is 2, what would be this value? A total distance is x. So if you reduce this value, that would be x minus 2. Up to this is clear now. Yeah. And now what else? M. M is acting anticlockwise. So minus M. Equals to 0. So finally, we can write the equation of the general moment equation is like that. M. 100x minus 300 x minus 2 right which is a newton into meter okay sir we choose the uh, moment before uh, c point right it's up to you we just try to develop an equation that from where we can easily find out the value of x and as we consider have a look this is the y and this is the x so this is the origin well where x and y are all zero so that's why we consider the extreme value of x this is the value of x so that means what you consider the range from zero to x so now put x if x equals to three you can get the moment here if you want to calculate the moment at point 2, you put the value of x2 here. You will get the moment as well. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You take a section here, which is where x equals to 2. So, instead of doing another calculation or again calculation, what you can do? You just put the value of x equals to 2. So, you get the moment is 100x. So, if it is the 2, so... 200 would be the moment at point B. You can check. So this portion you should have clear from chapter 4 while you did the moment calculations. I, as I said that we can develop the moment diagram either by considering the diagram situation or we can take this section and from this particular section we can calculate the individual locations moment value also the shear force value do you remember that lecture yes sir yes sir. <clears throat> okay so now if we go more 
on this situation i hope you understand this uh, equation development for this moment diagram or moment so we know that m by e i equals to d square y over dx whole square right so from this point of view we can say m equals to what e i d square y over dx whole square can we write this thing yes, hello sir. yes sir okay and instead of m value what we did we develop a general equations for moment so you can write m equals to this 100x minus 300x minus 2 this value okay and which is equals to ei d square y by dx whole square so one confusion is here if you do not attend this class carefully one confu confusion you'll face during your preparation that you might think oh this is x but why sir consider 100x and how did sir consider 300x minus 2 this way you understand so by denoting this x they are showing that this is the axis of x okay okay so now we know if we do one time integration the equation will get that would be the slope equations and if we do double integration the equation will get that would be the elastic curve equation so, okay as we know that if you do first integration on with these equations we will get the slope equation so which equation we are going to do this one integration of this so 100x integration would be uh, 50x square and minus 300 if you just consider this is as a x since this would be value of x exactly this is a constant value so uh, this would be 300 divided by 2 and x square right so it would be 150 into x minus 2 whole square and there will be a new constant value due to the integration that is we call c1 and since we do the integration so distance will be m square this term is newton into meter and we are doing this uh, integration with respect to dx so dx is what distance so distance is here in meter so that's why one time integration means another meter multiplications right so here we can say this is newton meter square okay yes sir yes sir so again the slope equations you can do another integrations you will get the elastic curve equations so in case of elastic curve equation you can consider another time integration so 50 by 3 x cube uh, minus 150 by 3 that is b 50 so it will be x cube and c1 so this is a constant so we know it would be multiplied with the uh, variable c1 x plus c2 okay so technically the problem is up to that since we develop one equations and already develop the slope and elastic curve equations so we can continue to find out the uh, deflection value as well because it would be easy for you to understand now so if you continue more to calculate the deflection value of the beam what are the unknowns c1 and c2 I hope you can still remember that this C1 and C2 there are two unknowns so with respect to the boundary condition of supports and reactions we can calculate the C1 and C2 easily so now come to the reaction point A <laughs> so at reaction point A any deflection Y A would be 0 or not Y would be 0 right yes sir yes, ok so similar fashion we can say that yc as well 0 so if we simply consider the location at point a so that time we also know x is equals to 0 0 sir it is not sir clear sir because you consider the value of x started from here and it finish here sir at the origin x will be 0 exactly 
this is the origin of x and y so if you understand why y equals to 0 you should understand why x equals to 0 because at the origin if you find this is no deflection so it is remaining in this point so y equals to 0 and this location x equals to also 0 here x equals to might be 3 at point C. So now you consider the point at x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 and putting in the third equations. Third equation means here. In elastic equation. Okay. So if you put the value x equals to 0 okay this term becomes 0 y equals to 0 this term becomes 0 this term becomes 0 so what are the equations left over this 50 minus x uh, sorry 50 into x minus 2 whole small cube these one right these equation and sorry this term and this term are there so technically t2 equals to 50 x minus 2 whole cube supposed to be like that hmm? yes sir let me ask you again do you understand why this e y e i y equals to 0 this equals to 0 this equals to 0 do you understand that because if you consider the point a if you consider the point a where x value equals to 0 y value equals to also 0 so y 0 this term is 0 x 0 this term 0 x 0 this term 0 ok so now the situation is that if you consider this c equals to 0 in this term while you consider this boundary condition if you find some value will generate negative distance keep in mind while you consider boundary condition if you find some value will generate negative distance that time you ignore this term so have a look if you put x equals to 0 it generates minus 8 or it this term generates minus 2 right so we'll ignore this term so if we ignore this term what left we left c2 equals to 0 I said if you find while you consider this boundary condition x or this distance is negative distance cannot be negative right so if you consider distance is negative or uh, find distance is negative that time you can ignore this that means this load is not under the consideration of your elastic curve it, it will be more clear later but right now you const you think like that if this value is negative we can ignore okay so if this is ignored then we can see that c2 equals to 0 now up to this is clear c2 equals to 0 because except c2 all the other values are 0 yes sir okay yes sir so ammo oh, sorry between two constant we find one now we left over another constant so if you consider the location at point c where you will get y c equals to 0 that means what y value is 0 but x value is 3 so you can consider the situation like that so it is at point c actually so you find x equivalence to 3 and y equals to 0 so it is technically y c this is technically y a okay so putting the equation in the elastic curve so you can see y equals to 0 okay for this location c so here you can see that x equals to 3 y equals to 0 so this term will be definitely 0 hmm? hello if you multiply yes, 0 sir. with yes, this value, it will be 0. Yes, sir. And C2, we have calculated that is 0 as well. Okay. 
and what else we have we have these three equations and here you can see that if you put the value of x is 3 this is generating positive value so we'll consider these three terms of these equations so you put the value of x is 3 you put the value of x is 3 here okay and then you calculate the value of c1 so they calculate the value of c1 equals to minus 30, 333 newton meter square okay yes sir okay so now you know the value of c1 and c2 C1 is minus 133 Newton meter square. Okay. So now if I say what is the maximum deflection point? You don't know, right? Still we don't know. Still we cannot say. And if I say how much is the maximum deflection? You still don't know. So two things are unknown still. One, where will be the maximum deflection? And what would be the maximum deflection amount? This is the situation of beam. Please try to respond. If you do not understand anything, you can raise your voice. Yes, sir. So now, yet now, we don't know that where or which location will be the maximum point of deflection. And even if we find the location of the maximum deflection point, what would be the maximum deflection amount? So in this scenario, we can assume that First of all, that okay, the maximum deflection may be in between A to B. First of all, we can assume like that. Basically, the technique is like that where the load changes, that particular point you consider. So, you can see from A to B or from A to C, there is a change on B. So, you consider location B. So, that means from span A to B, there is a chance to get a maximum deflection point. So this is one segment we consider. Another segment we can consider. There is another chance to have a deep maximum deflection at point B to C. Are you getting the concept? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's try. So that's why this slope equation and the elastic curve equation we can convert into two segment wise. One is from A to B. Another is from B to C. So, like we consider first of all segment A to B, while we can put the limit of X is 0 to less than or equivalence to 2. Can you see? This start from the 0 to up to 2. Yes, sir. So, it might be anywhere in between 2. We are assuming like that. We will check the credibility that segment A Indeed. might have the yes, maximum deflection. Okay. Similar way, we can consider the segment B to C. So, B to C would be 2 to 3. Right? 2 or more than 2 or 3 or less than 3. So, in between 2 to 3. Okay. So, first of all, this is the equation of slope. Do you remember that? This is the equation of slope. Right? So now you consider the range from yes, 0 to 2. So if you consider the range 0 to 2, what happened? You can see in the slope equations, you find these equations and you have another one. So but if you put the maximum value of 2, if you put the maximum value of 2 or maximum range, so what is the maximum range? 2. So that means these equations or this term becomes 0. So you can ignore it. Okay. So two condition or two situation you need to think while you will consider the boundary condition or while you will apply the technique of boundary conditions you try to find that either any terms is having or showing any negative distance that time you ignore it and while you consider the uh, segment checking right that time you put the maximum limit okay so if you find any terms is zero you can ignore it okay so, if you ignore this, you have only these two terms, 50x square plus c1. 50x square plus c1. So, what is the value of c1? 
minus 133. Okay. Okay. So minus 133 is the C1 value. Similarly, you can follow the same technique for elastic curve equation. So this is for the elastic curve, right? Okay, so now you can see, similarly, if you put the value of 2 here, this term equals to 0. So, you can consider 50x square and this c1x. Okay, and c2 value we know already 0. Okay, so you consider these two equations for segment A to B or segment between B up to B. Now, we consider the segment B to C. So, you come to the elastic curve equations. So, have a look. What is your maximum value? 3. Your maximum value is 3. 2 to 3. So, if you put the value of 3, no value is coming 0. It is coming negative. Here, does the matter. Okay. Only boundary conditions, if you find negative, that time you consider ignoring. But in case of this one you do not consider because you are considering this portion of the beam. So, this portion of the beam might have the effect of these also. Whatever the loading is in this portion, this loading effect might also affect the elastic curve of this. Are you getting the concept? Yes, sir. Okay. So, that's why you are considering the total equations. So, 50x square minus 150 x minus 2, these way you can put. So, C2 is 0. So, we don't have to put the value of C2. And similarly, for the uh, elastic curve equation, again you will consider the total equations. Okay. So, now we get these two situations. Segment AB and segment BC. Now, the interesting twist is here, that how can you say that, where will be your maximum deflection point? So, this is very interesting and very basic things. We know that if you consider a slope, if you consider a curvature, so do you know where the maximum curvature will be maximum? Oh, sorry, where the deflection will be maximum? where you find that slope of the curvature is zero do you understand where you find the slope of the curvature is zero so if you take this tangent here so you might find dy by dx is almost zero do you understand this is very basic uh, mathematics maybe we know that, right? That where slope of the curvature is zero, that is the maximum deflection point. Here slope is not zero, right? You consider slope on this particular point. So, but here you can see slope is tends to zero. So that means that is the maximum deflection locations you might think. Now, if you consider like that, you can check. You can check this slope equations. How many slope equations do you have here? So, how many slope okay. Have a look. We have two slope equations here, right? One is segment AB and it is for segment BC. So, we can cross check. First of all, we can think of slope equation A, uh, slope equations between AB. So, we consider that this dy by d equals to 0. So, that means what? This term will be 0. Now, we check the value of x. So, we can calculate the value of x. Right? Similarly, again we can consider dy by dx equals to 0. And we can calculate the value of x here. Right? So, most interestingly, you will find the value of x if in this range that means you will get the range here suppose 1.63 here 
right so what does it mean it confirms that the value of x between 0 to 2 right because the value of x is 1.63 so it confirms the maximum deflection occurs in between a2 now can you check by considering these on how much x is given okay do not waste your time so usually if you find x equals to the value in this range you can usually you can consider this is the value but if you find this x value is not in this range so that time you can check with this one okay yes sir so i hope you understand how to calculate the value of x that is or how to calculate the location of maximum deflection point okay okay so now you find the value of x which is 1.63 meter okay so once you calculate the value of x now it is easy to calculate the value of y so since you find the maximum or that is you already find out the location of maximum deflection point so definitely you know which segment is having the maximum so this is the equation for finding the maximum deflection so now you put the value of x here okay so you put the value of x here and finally calculate the value of e y i equals to something right so you find the ey value to something now it is easy for you to calculate the y because simply you can consider 1 by ei into 145 m okay so now if you just e and i is given if i give you the e and i value you can exactly find out the value of y is it not easy yes sir yes. okay so you can practice more problem like 6 or 2 this problem is similar okay both now if you understand the basic you can do almost all the similar examples right so i can discuss some variations on the calculations or the given problem like it might be given even the deflection right maybe y value is given in a particular locations or y value is given you need to find out the deflection or here you can see here main twist can be played i may say after finding the location and so uh, so other things e is given suppose and for a particular beam maybe b is given you need to calculate the h do you know how to calculate the h maybe b is given because if it is a cross sectional area you know i equals to what the moment BH, of inertia bh cube by u by 12 12 right 12. so if i give the b value hmm? if i give you the v value okay and if i don't give h value but if i give you the y value if i give you the y value now you can calculate the value of h do you understand yes sir yes sir so thank you guys